praise and all the glory unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahushai Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akya who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, through the Spirit, let's see. I'm going to go in on, uh, let's go to Mark 4, and we'll start at 21. And it reads, <coughs> this is uh, Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, and he said unto them, is a, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? And not to be set on a candlestick. Alright, so dealing with um, this knowledge, this wisdom, right? When we gain this knowledge, which is represented by that candle, which is the light, right? The knowledge is light. It's a metaphor. You know, we're not supposed to just go bury it in the ground or, or not share it or not teach it, not show the knowledge, right? No, instead, he says the candle is put on a candlestick, right? Just, uh, just like the scripture. Um, let me get that scripture real quick. <clears throat> Bear with me. Let, me. let me get this precept. <clears throat> to go to Matthew 5 and 14 it says actually let me see Okay. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 15. I'll start at 14. It says, Ye are the light, and this is how Shai speaking. Remember, he's speaking to his disciples. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Alright, so. The men who have this knowledge, have this truth, we're, according to the scripture, we're the light of the world. Why? Because we hold this knowledge. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Alright? A city that's on a hill, obviously that can't be hid. You, you're traveling at night, you know, you're driving. I, and I drive at night, sometimes from city to city. And when you, you know, when I'm coming back into Denver, I can see Denver. Why? Because it's lit up. See, you, it's, it says right here, a city on a, that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and give, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So this is a metaphor for that the house of Israel, the, you know, the, the, really the one third. That's who's going to get this light, who's going to understand this knowledge. The, the, the one third of Israel who, who, you know, is able to, who's been given the faith and wisdom and understanding to believe uh, and receive this knowledge verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven see so we got to let our light shine before men meaning we got to get out there and on the streets on the highways and hedges and teach all right that's how we let our light shine before men all right let's go back to mark Four in <clears throat> where am I at? Twenty-two. It says, "For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, 
neither was anything kept secret, but that it should become, become I'm sorry, but that it should come abroad. All right, and that's because we're in these last days, all right? There's nothing hid which now shall not be manifested. Meaning, the word manifest means shown. So meaning there's nothing hid that's not going to be shown in these last days. And why? Because the internet, right? The internet gives us the ability, the ability to expose everything. To Everything is coming to the light. You know, we're telling you who, that Esau Edom is the wicked, the so-called white man. We're telling you who the, the tribes are. You so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans. These all things were hid in the past. <coughs> but now it's coming to the light. It's coming. You're realizing who you are. There's a great awakening happening in the house of Israel. And it's reserved unto the one-third. right? Because two-thirds of our nation, they'll remain in that darkness. Right? They're not going to cleave to that. Um, truth. They're not going to say, oh yeah, I'm an Israelite. They're going to remain in the darkness. They're going to keep, you know, taking pride in calling themselves black, Mexicans, you know, Native Americans, whatever it is. That that's They're not going to cleave to the truth, but they're going to rather, you know, say, hey, you know, we don't agree. We're, we're you know, I'm a proud black man. Or I'm a proud you know, brown pride. So let's keep reading. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Not all men have ears to hear. I mean, every man has a he ear to hear, but they're not all hearing. Only the one third, only the elect is going to believe this truth, this knowledge. Verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that here shall more be given. <clears throat> so the elect, you're going to gain more from this truth than the two-third. The two-third, they'll hear it, and they're just going to, you know, basically walk walk away and in, in one ear, out the other. But the elect, it's going to resonate with your spirit. You're, you're going to actually, you know, it's going to, the truth is going to captivate you to, you know, do research, to learn more, to study more, to, you know, the spirit will be on you to, uh, you know, cleave unto this knowledge. Verse 25. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said... So is the kingdom of the Most High, as if a man should cast seed unto the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. Right? So we're, we're planting seeds by doing these videos, by, by uh, going out on the street corners. We're teaching our people the truth. You're planting a seed, right? You people, uh, the Israelites walk by us. And they hear, like, they realize, like, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm actually an Israelite. I'm not a black person or I'm not a, I'm not a Mexican person. You see? And, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's like a, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's like we don't know how it works, but it just that's that's the way it is. Like it, we, we manifest it. We show this truth. We bring this light out to our people. And next thing you know. You're producing good fruit. You know, you may have sparked a uh, an awakening in somebody, you know. Or one of your videos, somebody comes across it and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to look this up. I got to look this stuff up. What, like, this is crazy. See, just like when we came into the truth. You see? Verse 28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself... First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of the Most High? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? Verse 31. It is like a grain of a mustard seed, which 
When it is sown in the earth, it is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And see, that's how this truth is. Like It's like that mustard seed, that parable of the mustard seed, right? The mustard seed is a tiny seed. But when you plant it, hey, that tree, the, the tree, the mustard tree is like a gigantic tree. But it starts out as that small little tiny seed, you know? It says right here, less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But yet, well, let's read it. Verse 32. But when it is sown, it groweth up and become greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. You see that the, it's, this tree becomes so big and great branches come out of it that the birds can can lodge under it and, and you know, enjoy the, uh, the shade from the, the tree. You see, it's a resting place for the birds. So that's this the comparison of this truth. You see, when we we go in on this this truth, we go in on this um, knowledge. Same thing with us. We it, it gives us comfort. It gives us rest. But yeah, it may have just started with one little simple uh, somebody just telling you, "Hey, you're an Israelite." You know. Then you go and the spirit jumps on you to go research and. Go look things up, and then you realize, like, man, this is this is crazy. This thing is, you know, like a lot of the men who are in this truth, we all came in in different different ways, different um, methods, you know. Me personally, I came across another prophet at the gym, you know, and he starts speaking things to me. And what did I do? I that was that seed. He planted that seed. Next thing I knew, I was like. My spirit was just obsessed with, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to know more about this thing. Manifested into um, what it is now, you know. I'm here doing the work every day, doing the videos, going to camp every weekend. You know, being one of the prophets. Lord's will, I'm one of the prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. I'm out on the street corners daily, you know. We consider ourselves the uh, leaders of Israel, right? If you're out here on the streets teaching, hey, if the Lord put a spirit on you and you got the faith to get up and teach, and you be on the, the, the highways and the hedges, then you actually, you know, according to this knowledge, you, you're you're a leader of Israel. You're a leader of a great, the greatest nation that that Yahweh Bashem Yahshai has ever put forth, right? So, and it's all started out from that little one seed being planted. See? That's why they gives you the parable of the mustard seed. Um, let's read 33, Mark 4 and 33. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Okay, so, Yahweh Shai, when he taught... And this shows you that this truth is not for everybody. And only the elect is going to appreciate a parable. All right? Only the elect can understand a parable. Only the elect, you know, that the, the, the disciples were part of the elect. That's why Yahweh Shai spoke. He never spoke unless it was a parable. If it was for everybody, he would have just been speaking it in plain English. He wouldn't have been. The parable is like a code, right? You're speaking in code. People don't, you know, they other people around you, they don't understand what you're saying, except for the people who know the code, right? That's how Yahweh Shai spoke with his with his men. All right, so he, you know, he was speaking in that in that parabol parabolic uh, dialect, and then when he would get alone with them, it tells you right here that he would expound when he was alone with his with his men. <coughs> Now Yahweh Shah would be expounding, all right, meaning he would he would give them a, a, a better a better breakdown of what he was teaching, right? And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna look up that word expound. Let's get this expound definition, all right. It says present or explain a theory or idea idea systematically and in detail. Right? Present, explain, interpret. These are all um, similar words. Discuss. You see? 
So that's what he would do. He would give them the, the interpretation of the parable, right? Just like we do when we're sitting with our brothers. We, we're, we're, we study, you know, we're able to do the, the lessons, the videos. And what do we do? One brother reads the parable while another brother breaks down the parable. Same thing, we we're in the spirit of Yahab Bashem Yahushai, all right? Verse 35. And the same day when even when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. <clears throat> and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest now thou not that we perish? So this is when the, the, the ship was getting filled with water. It was about, the, about to sink. And Yahweh was just asleep in the back of the ship. Right? Let's keep reading. Master, carest thou not that we perish? They were all worried. You don't care if we die? Yahweh Shai, you wake up. You don't care if we die? <laughs> they were all shooken, right? They are all shooken. Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? See that? The Awashai was asleep, man. He was having a good dream, probably, you know, just relaxing in that boat. Meanwhile, the boat was, you know, being filled with water. They thought they were going to drown. They thought they were going to sink and die. Yahushai was like upset. Like, you all have no faith? You all know, you all know who I am. You guys know who. Don't you believe I'm the, the, the son of the Most High? But yeah, you're over here. You, you think that the, the Most High is going to put us to death in this manner? You see, that was his mindset. And he's telling them like, hey, you all have no faith. You see? Resting right after he probably broke down some parables to them, probably was just expounding on things to them in the ship. And here they come with their lack of faith, right? And he woke up and just calmed the sea, calmed the waters, because he had that power, he had that spiritual power. Power that we're going to have eventually, but we got to have the faith, right? We can't come in that spirit with no faith. If you don't have faith, there ain't gonna no spiritual powers will come to us. So this is a whole new uh, level, right, of of understanding that we have to have if we want to, we want to have spiritual powers. You see. But it go, it all starts out with that mustard seed. We already the seed was planted, then our our faith has to grow. This we got to grow in the spirit, and then you know eventually. When the storms come, we're going to be able to just deal with them, just like Yahweh Shai. All right? And if we, if you freak out when the storm comes, like if you freak out during Jacob's trouble, then what? you're not going to have that stability that we, what we always tell you about in Isaiah. All right? Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the, thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So constantly, brothers, we got to keep enduring, keep keep growing in the spirit. The spirit is going to sustain us no matter what storms come to us. All right. We have to have if you don't grow in your spirit, if you don't have grow in your faith, you know, if you don't have that mustard seed, don't become that gigantic uh, tree, you know, then you're, you're not going to have stability. You're not going to have the proper wisdom and knowledge that's going to keep you stable when the storms come. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the love goes unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekakodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to the elect. Shalom, brothers. Keep enduring.